Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this podcast, I'm going to talk about microevolution, which is simply change in the allele frequency of a gene pool. Um, contrast that with macroevolution, which is large scale over a long period of time, speciation. They're essentially the same thing, uh, but microevolution is just at the small level. So let's look at a population here. Let's say we have a really small population. This population just has 10 individuals, and five of them, we'll say this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, have red hair because they have two genes for red hair. But the other ones are not redheads. So we'll say half of the people have red hair, half of the people don't. And so that would be our population. But if I were to take all those genes and just kind of throw them in a pile, that would be our gene pool. And that's what life does. We basically have a population. There is sex, which is a shuffling of the gene pool. And we create another generation and another generation and another generation. It's almost like shuffling a deck of cards over and over and over and over again dealing out two at a time to make your population and then we shuffle it again on the next generation. And so microevolution is if we ever change the allele frequency. What's the allele frequency? Well, let's say red, it looks like red is recessive and since there are 14 red, that means our allele frequency is 14 out of 20 or 0.7 and uh, our, our blue or non-red is going to be 0.3. And so with each generation, if we ever have change in the allele frequency, then evolution has occurred, microevolution. And there are only five things that cause microevolution. And that's why my hand was on the first slide, because if you can remember all five of those things, you can remember, or all five of your fingers, you can remember the five causes of evolution. And so basically, look at your hand for just a second. This one has a massive <laughs> ring on it, but we're going to go through each of those. And so the first first thing that can cause change in the allele frequency is going to be small sample size. So on your hand, that would be your small finger. And so let's say that this is our population, original population. Again, we have 10 individuals, so we have 22 total genes. But let's say those are shift, uh, are are randomized for the next group. So through sex, we get a shuffling of those genes. And so in our second generation, just due to chance, the allele frequency is going to change or it's gonna drift away from its original allele frequency. And so as we watch these being selected time after time after time, the original population is used to create the second generation, but it's the allele frequency, heat frequency here that sets up the third, which eventually sets up the fourth, which eventually sets up the fifth. And I'm not gonna wait for this animation to, to finish, but basically you can see that the allele frequency is starting to drift away just due to random chance. In other words, if you flip a thousand coins, are about half of them gonna be heads and half of them tails? Yeah, but if you flip five coins or six coins, are half of them gonna be heads or tails? No, because chance takes over. And so let me show you a computer simulation of that. Let's say we do alleles here and then we do it over time just using a computer simulation with an N of 20, so 20 individuals, you can see the allele frequency started at 0.5 and 0.5, but it drifts away. If in this computer simulation we move the number to 200, or to 2000, then those alleles stay at about the same rate. And so as long as a population is large and not small, then microevolution shouldn't occur, should stay at the specific same one. Next thing that can cause microevolution is non-random mating. The way I remember that is this finger right here is your ring finger. It's got a ring on it, and that stands for a mate. And so basically, if we have non-random mating, that can cause microevolution. Example, let's talk about humans. This is the Charles II. So basically, if you look at this pedigree, there's weird stuff going on. So right here we have a niece marrying an uncle or having kids with an uncle. And see so we see that occur here. And so we have inbreeding. So we've got people who are choosing mates based on their last name or that they're in the same family. They have royal blood, but that also kind of keeps the money in the family. And so this is now non-random mating. And so evolution occurs, microevolution occurs. And these people develop what's called the Hamburg chin that almost made it tough to eat. Or let's talk about blue eyes. So blue eyes in humans showed up. It's a mutation, but a lot of people find blue eyes attractive. So they're choosing a mate based on the color of their eyes. And so the color of uh, all humans' eyes went from just one person having blue eyes to, I think in the U.S., something like 10% of the population has blue eyes. And so it's a much higher rate, so microevolution has occurred because we have non-random mating. You're choosing a mate based on their appearance. If we go to the third finger, so your middle finger, the M in your middle finger should remind you of the word 
mutation. And so mutations can cause microevolution as well. And so this is DNA. And remember, DNA makes RNA, makes proteins, makes you. And so if we get a change in the letter, that causes a change in the protein. So this would be a mutation that causes the hemoglobin protein to mutate, and it causes sickle cell anemia. So people whose blood, blood cells have this sickle shape appearance. Now remember that gave them advantage if you live in an area where there's a lot of malaria. Um, but that mutation, since it's a new allele, is going to change the allele frequency as well. The, the fourth one, so our pointer finger, the pointer finger should remind you that um, some individuals can leave a population and some of them can come into a population. We call that gene flow. And so if you have individuals leaving a population or new individuals coming in, that's clearly going to change the allele frequency as well. This is a great graph here. This is looking at mitochondrial DNA in humans in different places on our planet. And so we can see that all humans originated in Africa, and then we had a migration that went to Australia, a second migration that created the people in Asia, and eventually the Middle East, and then spread into Europe as the Ice Age started to, started to move back. But as those populations, if there wasn't um, connectivity between them, that's definitely going to change the allele frequency. And that's one reason that we see humans having different appearances depending on where they exist on our planet. And so again, the pointer finger means leaving or coming in. And so what is the fifth thing that can cause microevolution? What is the thumb? Well, thinking back to, you know, the Romans, you either survive or you die, death or, uh, well, death or life. And so you should think about uh, what's called natural selection. And so nature is basically looking at the way you are, and it's voting thumbs up, you survive, or thumbs down, you die. Example, this is the tuberculosis um, bacteria. And so if we treat with that with an antibiotic, we're going to kill all of the bacteria that aren't susceptible to uh, the, that are susceptible to the antibiotic. And so over time, those bacteria are going to gain antibiotic resistance. And so they're doing that by nature selecting or killing some of them, thumbs down, and then ones that survive are then able to pass those genes on. So again, there are five things that can cause microevolution. Can you remember the five? They are small sample size, non-random mating, mutation, gene flow or immigration or emigration, and then natural selection. And if you got all of those, thumbs up to you.